Hi, and welcome to a tutorial on volume. Now, the title of this tutorial is a big clue as to which one of these 3D shapes is the odd one out. So have a little browse over those seven shapes and see if you can spot the one that does not um, fit the same sort of description as the others, let's say. Okay, you can feel free to pause the video if you like, and we will reveal in a second. Did you spot it? It is, of course, the LucasAid bottle. Okay, the reason being that it's not a prism. The rest of the shapes are prisms because they have the same shape as their cross section, which is that, you know, here it's the right angle triangle, which is exactly the same shape as the other side of the shape. More, much more easy to see is perhaps this tin of beans. It's got the same circle on either end of it, just like the Toblerone, the same triangle has been maintained across the whole length of the shape. So that if we cut here, we'd get exactly the same triangle in the middle. Same with this hexagonal prism here, this Smarties tube, okay, exactly the same congruent shape at the other side. Um, and opposite faces here, the two cross-sectional areas are equal here, they are the same circle. And the same thing here, this is a rectang rectangular prism, otherwise known as a cuboid, okay? And it's the same on the base as it is on the top. Okay, so I hope that's nice and clear. This is a more sort of curvy shape, okay? Nicer for drinking from, perhaps. Um, but it's definitely not the same shape on either end. They're not congruent. Okay, so that's, the, that's what a prism is. And we've been looking at prisms, okay? So here's a cuboid, a rectangular prism, and we've been learning about how to find its volume. So the volume here, we talked about how it's the area of this base here, four by three, and then times by two, okay? So four times three, two layers of it, um, which is 24 centimeters cubed in this case, okay? Centimeters cubed because we're in 3D, and there's three dimensions that have been multiplied together to get the answer. Okay, the next one, without the cube shown, but still as easy. Let's do it. So three centimeters times by five centimeters times by eight centimeters, which is 120 centimeters cubed. Okay, nice and easy. We could go and have a look at a, more, a compound shape, okay, as the, as the cross-sectional shape. All right, so in this case, we've got the, the compound shape here with an area of, first of all, let's have a look at this, six times two, which is 12 centimeters squared, and three times seven, which is 21 centimeters squared. And remember, when it comes to volume, that 12 centimeters squared will then be multiplied by five, okay, to get the volume of this bit here. So what we could do, we could even think about it in two, as two different cuboids, okay? So cuboid one, the one sitting on the top, the volume would be six times two, which is that 12 we can see, times by five, which is 60 centimeters cubed. For cuboid two, do exactly the same thing, just different numbers. Okay, so in this case, the volume is three times seven times by five, or three times seven, we just worked out to be 21 times by five, which is, um, I don't know, what is that, 105. Um, centimeters cubed, okay? And then it's just a case of, I guess, adding them up. So 60, so it's overall volume, put these two together, is 60 plus, a, oh, multiply, plus, plus 105, which is 165 centimeters cubed. Now, what we could have done as well, option two, which is perhaps a little bit quicker, is that we could have added these things up and then because that's the area of the cross section, and then times the whole thing by five. That's another option, okay? So this was option one, was to do each one in turn, or we could just find the area of the cross section. So 12 plus 21, option two, 12 plus 21 times by five, which was what, 30, 33 times by five, yeah, which is 165 centimeters cubed. So you know, we can use that as well. Often that's a bit quicker, option two, okay? So we can get an in general in here, okay, if you like. All right, hope you're happy with that. So the answer there, 165 centimeters cubed, 
for the volume. Let's have a look at this. So we could say in general, the volume of a prism is the area of the cross section times by the length. Okay, which is exactly what we just did right there. Okay, in that last example, in option two, we times we, we found the, the total area of that cross section and then just times it by five. Okay, let's have a look, a look at another shape. Okay, so the volume of the prism is the area of the end cross section just times by the length. Let's have a look at how this works for a, a triangular prism. Now we know that the the area of the cross section, okay, we've just talked about this, times by the length. So the area of the cross section is base times height divided by two. Another way you can write that is half times base times height, and then times by length, okay? So if you like, we can write that base times height, I want to be a bit clearer, divided by two times by the length, okay? All right, so we're going to use that, that formula now. So find the area of the triangle, and then when we know the area, just times by the length. Let's have a look at the, an example of this. Okay, so here we go. The volume, let's write it out again so we don't forget it. The base times height divided by 2 times by the length. Okay, squeeze it in there. Now the base is 4 centimetres, so it's going to be 4 times by the height, which is 6 divided by two, that's how we find the area of the triangle, and then times the whole thing by eight. Now what's four times six? I know that's 24 divided by two times by, whoopsie daisy, eight. Okay, and I know that half of 24, 24 divided by two is 12 times by eight. So I get 96 centimeters cubed for the area here. Okay, all right, so it just follows that pattern. You just find the area of the cross section in this case, it was 12 centimetres squared, and then just times it by the 8 centimetres in length to get 96, in this case, centimetres cubed. Okay, always aim to try and get your, I always check your units at the end. Make sure you put the correct units. Okay, um, right, so just one example of that. And um, the next example, I'm going to go back to this in general statement. Okay, and we're going to have a look at actually at a cylinder as well. We're going to extend this work to a cylinder. So from the volume of a prism, we know that if it was a cylinder, then the area of the cross section, I'm going to write it in full again, area of the cross section, in this case it's a circle, times by the length. Now the area of a circle, so in this case area of a circle, times by the length. Okay, I'll put it in brackets perhaps just to make it nice and clear. Uh, area of a circle we know from pi day is pi r squared times by the length. So it's just a case of finding these numbers now. Pi is just a number. We get it from the pi button on our calculator. Do not be tripped up here because are we given the radius in this question? Well, we are, but not directly. We're given the diameter. So if the diameter is 8 centimetres, that's right across through the centre of the circle, then the radius, remember, is half of the diameter. So the r here is actually just 4. So it's pi times 4 squared. And then what are we going to be multiplying by? We're going to be multiplying by the length or the height in this case, which is 9. Okay. So 4 squared I know is 16 pi times by 9. I'm now going to grab my calculator and I'm going to I'll work that out because I can't do that in my head very easily. And we're going to round it to three significant figures. So it's 16 times by pi times by 9, which equals 144 pi. I'm going to round it to three significant figures, which is 452 centimeters cubed to three significant figures. Okay, so we, we've tackled volume of prisms there, okay? We can do it as long as we can, we're able to find the area of the cross-sectional end, okay? The cross-sectional shape at the end of the 3D prism, okay? And as long as we know what the height is or the length of that prism, okay, then we can, we can in general, we can find the volume of the prism.
So good luck with the work. I hope that's nice and clear. And please don't forget to subscribe. It's very important so others can find these tutorials. And I hope it's been helpful. Good luck. <laughs>